it's Track Tuesday, and I uh, said, you know, after the con was Tuesday, that was going to be about the Star Trek fans of the Northwest, and now we're the next one after. Today will be about Season 8.5. But, we have a question! Um, Mercenary Pop-Tart. That's adorable! Now all I can think about is Solid Snake dressed as a Pop-Tart. Now I'm thinking of Nancat. Where's the question? I am a fan of the entire TV movie franchise. Deep Space Nine's my favorite, but Voyager always felt like it wasn't on par with other Star Trek creations. What's your thoughts? My thoughts? Well, let's see. First of all, I have been addicted to coffee since I was 10. That's when my parents allowed me to have my first full cup of coffee. Come, you know, 1996, four, five, 1995, when Voyager came out, I was like, oh my god. See, because of family situations, I was raised by um, mom's best friends. That was, she was my babysitter and mom and my sister. So I had a lot of female role models in my life. Dad was out working a lot. He worked on the trains. Anyways, backstory. Here comes something. I watched Next Generation when I was a kid. I adored Wesley. I watched Deep Space Nine. Couldn't really get into the whole melding with Jake, whatever, but I really liked Bashir. But then here comes Voyager. And by that point, I had already solidified myself into necessarily wanting to discover a science, like physics and math and stuff. And then here comes a female captain. And I was just like, absolutely, completely blown away. I was like, there have been other captains, like Rachel Garrett, but she was like one episode and she died. And you were like, this isn't that great. But here comes, you know, Kate Mulgrew as Captain Janeway, and they're going off to the Delta Quadrant, but, and I was like completely amazed because by that point I'd already read the Star Trek Encyclopedia, and I was like, oh my god, well there's the Alpha Quadrant, okay, well there's Deep Space Nine, da, 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 the Beta Quadrant, well that's the, that's where the Klingons and the Romulans and some other stuff takes place. We know about the Gamma Quadrant because that's where the Bajoran Wormhole goes to, but we don't know anything about the Delta Quadrant. And apparently the Borg come from the Delta Quadrant. And I just like was reading, 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 and then all of a sudden Voyager flies out to the Delta Quadrant, or gets knocked out there, and they get stuck out there. And I'm like, oh my god, we get to explore the other side of the galaxy! And it, that's what it was. I was like, oh my god, we get to run into the border. Like, oh my god, we get to run I was just fanboying all over the place. Not to mention, like, the first part of the episode when the nacelle when I was sold. That's what it is. And she drinks coffee. And she was a take no... Well, she didn't take shit from a lot of people. You know, it was like, what was Picard's favorite weapon? That little tiny, like you know, disc phaser. What was Cisco's? Well, I don't know. He had the Defiant, but <laughs> that was his favorite weapon. But what was Janeway? She, I was surprised she didn't walk around, hold, you know, with a phaser battle rifle on her, on her back the entire time. <laughs> uh, you know, she was way more combat oriented than the other captains. Uh, didn't get to see much of Kirk at the time, but still, it was just sort of like really powerful female. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much that. That, that's pretty much what sold me on Voyager and why I keep going back to it. So yeah, now that I've answered that question extensively, but on to season 8.5 of Star Trek Online. So according to the release notes, um, oh, I've compl the, the, the gear. On your ship screen, where you have all the little stuff over here, you can just click it and it'll fly out a little menu of like all the stuff that's in your bags and your bank if you happen to be on a map like that, like say your Starbase or Earth. Kornos and and it all everything on your other ship so you can just sort of like hot swap your stuff as long as you're out of combat Which I think is really nice because sometimes I forget to swap between my phased Polaron and my protonic Polaron because I want to hear the the protonic Polaron I'm gonna be flying around inside the contested space bonus Voth, but I want phased Polaron for pretty much everywhere else flow caps subspace decompiler uh, I like it because the consoles and I can switch between like my wells and whatnot pretty effectively without having to like go to the shipyard, pull everything off that It's just really annoying to... Plus now you can hot swap in between, in sector space. That's cool. They're also, the old, the things that you put on before, if they're on another ship, they'll remember their location. So in case you want all, you know, blah, blah, blah. So you can just click, say, yeah, I want that. Yeah, I want that. Yeah, I want that. Yeah, I want that. Because, you know, you use your plasmonic leech on every ship you have because you're good on flow caps. So you pretty much always have that, you know, remember where it's at 
and as you pick your ship to ship to ship, your plasmonic leech will move around with you. Really cool. Especially if you want, if you're just like, you know, I'm kind of tired of my Vesta for a little while. I want to play on my Wells, which I have called the Chronolist, or I want to be on my Dyson Science Destroyer. I'm going to have a whole different video about that one. I got to, I got to dink, dink, dink around with that one more. The Small Craft Arena, I don't PvP. Flat out, we're not sticking time on that. I don't PvP. I like the fact that there's shuttles for it, but I don't PvP. You can now sell stuff from your, that are, that come from the boxes. Like the genetic resequencers, which is good because like the mirror universe ships. I can't tell you how many of them I have. Now they sell for, what's it say, 150,000? That, that's pretty good. Um, I don't know why you'd sell large bonus pools of consume, the consumables. You just, just use them. Uh, no more hourly events. This is probably a blessing for someone like me because I only play at certain times of the day. So after a, I, I understand that there was a general progression on the clock so that like some, you know, one on a Monday, I would have the dilithium mining at 10 o'clock in the morning. But like the next day, I'll probably have a fleet mark event. The next time I'll have the tour of the universe. But then again, it would have been beneficial if the dilithium mining was at the same time every day. But then again, that wouldn't affect. It's great that all this stuff. Now they have weekends. Like this next coming weekend is a day lithium weekend. Frankie mine, the plate mine, and the VIP stuff are all doubled. Really good at lining up the triangle. <laughs> you can get 5,000 out of it. But this next weekend you can get 10,000. You can't even refine that much in one day. And I'm lifetime and I can't do that. You can refine 8,500 a day. And that's with the DOF mission from the Dilithium Mine Fleet Holding. Many Federation episodes have been revamped. Uh, Tour of the Galaxy has been changed since it's no longer an hourly event. Quest is now just constantly up and on a daily 20 hour cooldown. Time limit of 15 minutes to complete the mission. Tau Dewa sector block has been added. You can get the well traveled space trade visiting eight sector blocks during the mission. Rewards are now given for each sector block you visit with bonus rewards for visiting more sector blocks within the time limit. 15 minutes? That's that's pretty fast, but you know, you're, pretty, you're still gonna wanna have like your Borg or your Mako or adapted Mako if you're, or adapted Honor Guard if you're Klingon so you can surpass warp 10. I have a 15 second cooldown on my on my slipstream, so I'm a little cheap on that. Plus I use Mako, so I'm constantly flying around at like warp 19. And when, uh, and if someone happens to give me diplomatic immunity and or raiding party, I can push it up to almost tw warp 23, let alone, you know, quantum slipstream, which I've been able to push up to 48, which is just absolutely screamingly fast. <laughs> Beamfire at will. Uh. Reputation power. Those are now all on a five minute individual cooldown. Nothing can reduce them. So, no like A to B. Yeah. Cryo mobilizer, attack pattern beta, pre-fire chamber, resolve an issue, resolve an issue, resolve an issue, resolve an issue, mines, torpedoes, resolve an issue, resolve an issue, traits, resolve an issue. A lot of resolving of issues, it looks like. Oh, the biochemist, ground doff has been changed. No longer has that like ridiculously high stacking. Like I think I got it once up to 25 on the Mugato uh, in Colony Invasion because he takes so long to die and I have like eight, uh, six different powers that can apply that debuff. But now it's just the debuff no longer stacks, the duration no longer scales with duty officer quality and it's always only five seconds. Technically it's a minute right now. I don't know what the discrepancy is. The resistance reduction now scales with duty officer quality. White 10%, green 20%, blue 30%, purple 40%. And I have Dathan, the one you get from the mission, so it's that and it's just absolutely disgusting. Deflector officers say they have a chance of reducing the cooldown on all deflector abilities. Now can properly affect the cooldowns of Tachyon Beam and Energy Siphon, which is a benefit for those running with the drain on the Dyson Science Destroyer. I'll put a link down to this entire thing so you can read it in yourself. I'm just going over the main things that kind of affect my gameplay or the whole thing that makes it awesome. The new feature, Ship Loadouts, is still being finalized, not available currently on the holodeck. Ship Loadouts is like, uh, if you played at least World of Warcraft, you can have a gear set. So, and it'll take everything from your bag and put it on there. So if like, I want to change my ship over to more of a direct attack rather than a drain, I can swap out some consoles. I know there's probably people that want to have like an escort with a beam boat and they're just like, oh, I'm in a beam boat mode today. Or they can just have like complete candidates. They can just completely swap their loadouts. That's what I'm thinking is beneficial for that. Dyson Science Destroyer. I like it kind of. It's not my Vesta and I, it sucks that I keep going back to the Vesta, but that says something about the Vesta.
I will chat with y'all next week. Don't forget, subscribe to keep up with at least Trek Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, something about Star Trek. Or you can just watch my vlogs the rest of the week. You know. Thumbs up if, you know, Star Trek. Yo. Coffee. Black. Bye-bye. <laughs> yep, like, I didn't get there early enough on, well, because I had practice, on Saturday to do the luncheon thing. I didn't get there till like 2.